Boston University talking about soft tissue fossilization, National Geographic stepping up, talking about fossils 101, which means they are starting over again. And I agree with them. It is time to start over. Now, they're talking about soft tissue fossilization. This is a National Geographic, and here we go. Listen to this. Soft tissues to be remarkably preserved. Other fossilization methods change the specimen as it is being preserved. For instance, carbonization transforms soft tissues into thin black films of carbon. In fact, countless layers of carbonized plant material create a well-known fossil fuel, coal. So far we're talking about plants. Now, here it comes. But one of the most common types of fossilization that changes a specimen is called permineralization. Permineralization begins when minerals from water or the ground enter the pores of dead plant or animal material. Over time, the minerals attach themselves, clinging onto cellular walls and building a crystalline network in the empty cavities. This mineralization hardens the bone and turns it into stone, thereby preserving its original structure and fossil form. Okay, I don't need to go any further, but I do want to show you what it really does preserve. And permineralization is just bones being infused with minerals. Well, we have the entire body part, and in some cases, the complete bodies of creatures. This is DNA certified. This is a human lung. Anybody that knows anatomy knows about the depression of the, the heart in the left lung. This is the anatomy of the pleura, which is the coating that coats the lung. This fabric is the fabric of the coating of the lung. And it's been DNA certified, CAT scanned, and anatomist verified. And that is only one of many of the uh, mud fossils that we have discovered here at Mud Fossil University. So on that note, let's go a little bit further. All right, this is Gary Evans found this, and, and I hope he's all right. This goes back a couple of years. I haven't heard from him in a while. Gary, I hope you're all right, brother. Comment on this. All right. He, he, you know, he saw my same, same as everybody else. I saw what you had. I went out, I looked, and boom, I saw this rock, and I thought it was unusual. It had those little bumps on there. So he banged it open, and here's what was inside. And he said, I looked at that, and I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you just opened up a lung. And that's a pretty, pretty obvious lung. Anyway. I know it's obvious because I know I understand the lung. That's the red part of the lung where the arterial blood comes down. This is the, you know, the, the vein blood. It's black blood. And you, it transfers the molecules. It's called carboxylation. Carbonic acids turn into carbonic gases. They go blow out through your lungs. There's 3,500 of them that comes out of your lungs at least. And these are all transferred from transition metals. And that we're going to get into too because that is fascinating. And Greg Morrison sent me something on that. And I'm telling you right now, I have to give credit to all these people. Because here, here, I'm going to show you something. Right up there, I'm just going to say right now. I'm looking at these Uper lights, and they're in this. You can't see it. We're going to go over in a second. And Greg sent me that. Um, Gary Evans sent me this. I just got off the phone with Phil... Uh, Harris, who is, I call him Phil the Heartbreaker, he's got, he went out, 15 minutes, same thing, went out and found a heart broken half, and it is absolutely stunning, the blood just leaked all over, and you can see the same thing, the red, the black, and the yellow, and that's what happens, you get a yellowy looking thing between the red and the black, and it happens here, see that, that's a lung right there, that's a lung. And, and I actually had a doctor call me and say, I can tell you how that guy died, wh wh which way he was laying, because the, the blood has drained down, obviously. So I said, oh, that's nice. Anyway, I mean, it's just what it is. It is what it is. So now what happens to this lung? So Gary, and here's why I'm going to teach you what happens to mud fossils and how you have to keep them protected. You have to dry them out in a certain way if you want to keep them. And when they come right out of a wet mud flat, that's a whole different kettle of fishies.
I just want you to understand the difference between this kind of mud fossil and the kind of mud fossils I normally show because mine are in fresh water um, preservation and they just hardened up because they got exposed to, to dryness. This comes out of a mud flat. This is a different chemistry and what happens is they, they fall apart. All right. Saltwater preservation is absolutely fabulous. However, as soon as they dry out, uh, they, they just turn into, literally into mud. Okay, this is what happens to them after a week or two of just sitting around dried out from this saltwater preservation. Somebody might be able to come up with a technique to, to make these things stay uh, in their pristine condition, but I, I really don't know what it would be. You have to change the pH, maybe add some oils. I have no clue.